Hi there, Wes Olszewski, uh, author, maker of videos, storyteller, whatever, uh, here in uh, Poorly Lit Studios. And today what I want to address are some of the most common questions that I see in the comments on my videos or I get through emails and so on. And believe it or not, uh, uh, there's a lot of repetition in here. So uh, the first and most common question is, where do you get those drawings? that we see in your videos. I would love to give you the name of the person who supplies those drawings to me. He's a very good friend, uh, a great historian, great collector, but he's also very private and he wants to keep it that way and so do I. Uh, he invested a great deal of money in buying the entire lot of those drawings for a lot of different fleets and a lot of different vessels. He got all the microfilms and then he invested again to have those microfilms taken and digitized. So there's a lot of money involved in his investment and because I'm a good friend of his he lets me use them when I ask which is great. I'm not going to give out his name because a lot of you out there would be coming to his door and knocking his door down looking to get the same access and I have to protect his privacy and I mostly want to protect his investment. I get the drawings from a very private collector and he's going to stay that way. So there we go. Question number two. Do you make model boats for hire? No. I quit doing that in 1985. That was the last time I made a model boat for hire. Uh, it was the John W. Boardman and uh, it was a pretty good work. I made it for uh, uh, the captain of the uh, from the Huron Cement Company and uh, he was a good guy and uh, he paid me double what I asked for it. So I went in with a price, I went in with the boat when it was done, and he got out his checkbook and he wrote it for twice the amount. And I wasn't going to argue with him. So, uh, but no, I have not made boats for hire since then. My model boats for me largely are uh, a stress reliever. So when I'm under a lot of stress, I knuckle down and, and I start making boats. And I always have uh, since uh, the uh, late 1970s. That's what I do to relieve my stress. So, the next question. <clears throat> How much do you make from the ads that we see on your YouTube videos? Great question. Because a lot of people think you're getting filthy rich from these ads and from these videos. You see it all the time, Hollywood this, Hollywood that, and uh, this person's a YouTuber and has got a mansion and all kinds of sports cars and all the drugs that he can buy and so on. Uh, no, that's not the way it works. AdSense doesn't really work that way. Uh, I've found in the last uh, year that I, I've been, year and a half that I've been monetized there, that uh, I'm bringing down uh, somewhere in the $250 per month rate. And it's, if you make a lot of videos in a month, you make a little bit more. If you make no videos in a month, you make about 200 bucks. So that's where it is. Uh, if you go into this for the money, you're in it for the wrong reason. You're not going to get rich doing this. Uh, you're going to get rich doing the TikTok, stick your face in the camera, and yo, yo, yo stuff, but you're, you're not going to get rich doing what I do. I'm just getting the information out. So, uh, next question Will you read some stories from your shipwreck books? No. <laughs> Uh, I'm ADHD, and that means that reading aloud from written text is very difficult for me. If you ever saw how many bloops I have in the narration that I have to do for my little short videos, you'd be amazed. And that's because ADHD people read something and then we start thinking beyond the printed word, and then we trip over ourselves along the way. And uh, especially if it's something you read yourself. If it's something someone else read, I'll start reading it and then I'll go off on a direction of, well, it could be this or it could be that. And let's look here, let's look there. And 
there we go down the rabbit hole of ADHD. So I, I really do not read aloud. I never have. Uh, I've always refused it. Uh, if somebody wants to take one of my books and stand up in a crowd and read a story, go right ahead. But I don't do it myself. Next, what do you fly? Uh, a lot of people know that uh, I'm a former airline captain and corporate pilot, and uh, I'd, that was my career, but uh, for a while I was doing this as well, and uh, the whole time I was flying, in fact, I was writing books. So I had sort of two jobs going there, and uh, I'd, I gave it up around 2000 and said, no, that's enough for me. I've, I've been everywhere I wanted to be, got all the t-shirts I want to get, checked all the boxes I needed to check, I got my degree, my ATP, got my captain's hat, got my epaulets, got the whole ball of wax, and... No, I'm done with that stress. So, and my wife wholeheartedly agreed. So she was kind of sick of me being in assorted hotel rooms six nights a week. And so was I. To this day, I cannot stand the smell of hotel soap. Okay. So, uh, uh, and adjacent to that question is, do you miss flying? No. Don't miss it at all. Uh, for me, I know there's a lot of people out there that are the, if they couldn't fly, they die type. And all they want to do is fly, fly, fly all the time. Good. Great for them. I know a lot of people like that. I love them. Okay. Uh, for me, it was strictly a job. It was a job. I trained to be a professional. I approached it as a professional. I did the job as a professional. And then when I got out of it, I got out as a professional. See ya. So, who illustrates your videos? I do. I'm also an illustrator, and uh, I use a very old piece of software to do my illustrations, and it works just fine for me. As a matter of fact, I have two computers, uh, desktops here, one running Windows 7 that is not connected to the Internet, and it's a standalone, because it runs my old-time software for illustration better than the Windows 10 one does. So uh, I have two computers, one for illustration and one for writing and being on the Internet. Uh, next thing. Last question. Where do you get all the shirts that I see you wearing in the introduction to your videos? I've been doing this since uh, traveling around signing books since 1991. And you're usually doing it in a gift shop or a museum, someplace like that. And uh, I've always found that if they're going to sell my books, it's very polite of me, because I'm from Michigan, so I'm polite, to buy a, uh, a shirt or something. And usually I come home with a few shirts. And every time I bring home one shirt, my wife makes me get rid of two. So she's trying to limit me on the amount of shirts that I have. But uh, I got a lot of these. Uh, this, is, this one is from Avery, and it, it, it got too short for me, so I cut the sleeves out, which really bugs my wife. But uh, uh, Avery, at one time, I had a book that I turned in, and uh, they went to press on it, and they called me up. They said, it's at the printer right now. And I said, great, you didn't send me a contract. And there was silence on the phone. And so they said, well, what do you want? I said, well, what I want is, and I let him hang for a second, and I said, I want the same that you paid me for the last book, plus, more silence, I want one of those Edmund Fitzgerald sweatshirts that you guys are selling. So I got the contract and the sweatshirt the next day by FedEx. <laughs> so it's, it's always fun when uh, you can mess with your publisher, and Avery's the best publisher in the world as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, yes, I'll be up on the Great Lakes this summer. I hope to see you. I'll be in different places because i got to shoot a lot of video, but I want to meet a lot of people and sign a lot of books. I love meeting my readers, so I hope I get to meet you folks. Watch this website, and it'll tell you where I'm going to be and when. See you this summer.